Hey Blade HQ Nation, Jaren and Mark here bringing you yet another competition and giveaway. All right, last time we asked you for suggestions on what neck knives we should use for this month's competition. And by and far, you told us we should use the Azula from Essie. Now, this is a great knife and we both really wanted to use it. So to be fair, we gave it to our guest judge to use. Now you also gave us a lot of other great recommendations. So we chose from those runners up. I decided to go with the Topps MSK 2.5 and I'll be using the K-Bar Becker Necker. All right, since we both have our knives, let's go ahead and tell you how this competition is going to work. Now we've set up three stages where we'll set traps. Our guest host will demonstrate how each trap is set, then we'll do our best to replicate it. However, we won't be able to ask questions or get advice. This is to simulate the survival situation that you might find yourself in where you only have your memory to rely on to recall a book you read or a video you watched on how to set a trap. And to keep things interesting, we've set a time limit that each task must be completed in. Yeah, we don't want to make it too easy. All right, then once the task has been completed, our guest judge will tell us who he thinks did best and won the round. Whoever wins the most rounds will be declared the overall winner. All right, let's get out there. Let's do it. All right, this is stage one. We're gonna be making a simple spear where you just lash your knife to the end of a long stick. The purpose of that is just extending your reach. Um, you can, for uh, getting game, getting fish, uh, it's a very simple thing. It works in a pinch. You're gonna be using either paracord, maybe a boot lace or shoelace, something along those lines to lash that on there. It's really simple, really straightforward, nothing fancy. All right, this stick here is a green stick. It looks like it's been freshly cut. It's nice and long. Uh, it gives me the length that I want for extending my reach. And the length of your spear, you want it at least as tall as you are so that it's gonna extend your reach the way you want it to be. You can see this one's gonna be just about right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shave this down on the end a little bit and split it. So I'm just gonna get it started here and then I'm gonna baton the blade down into it. Actually, this is green enough, it looks like it's gonna go in just fine. All right, now you can see on the sides of this. See the sides of my knife blade coming out of the side of the wood there? That's perfect because I want that string to purchase on there just right. And then I'll just kinda do a couple half hitch simple lashings here. There you go. That's a spear, it's gonna work. And you're good to go. For the most part, I feel pretty confident about the whole thing, except for the knots. We'll see how I do on the knot tying. I'm a little concerned. Uh, I do not have a skeletonized knife. I have some Makarta handles on there. Uh, if I had a hex screw, I'd take those off. It certainly would probably be easier. All right, three, two, one, go. I went for a green branch. Uh, I saw how easy it was for Brandon to split that clean it up. So I went for a green branch. I had to strip it a bit and I had to take it off the branch it was growing on. So that took a little bit of time. I tried to pace myself out um, based on the time. Um, I was accused in other videos of not running fast enough. So I hauled out there. <laughs> uh, I found the wood uh, to be what I expected, which was hard to find a branch that was gonna work. I found several that were like four feet, which really didn't give me any kind of reach. Um, so I ended up taking, uh, cannibalizing the uh, stick that Jaron had. I think his actually was right here. That was the one he used and I felt like that would give me like a perfect like machine gun type uh, spear. It's a little bit thicker than I think you probably want. It's going to be heavier than you probably want, but it gave me the reach that I needed. So the knife was, felt good in my hand making it the whole time, but you know, over time I feel like the edge kind of lost its sharpness. I'm not afraid to touch this edge right now. It's, it feels just a slight, a little dull. Kind of shaving down this tip here, I could already tell that I was having a problem with it. Other than that, it felt good in my hand. It's nice to have it, quick access. When I got it back, I was able to strip off all the small limbs relatively quickly, um, and then just uh, finishing off the edge. Because it was heavy, it was hard for me to get leverage. I wanted to cut down on it and get my weight behind it. Um, rather than cutting up and just using arm strength. Um, so I ended up bringing it over to a stump, 
um, worked out a little niche, and then uh, used the last two minutes to, to tie on uh, the paracord to finish it off. As, when I was splitting this down the middle, I was noticing that I should have shaved more bark because that was hindering me from splitting. For this stage, the thing I struggled with the most was exactly what I thought it was going to be, was the tying the knots. Um, if you look at this, they're slightly loose, but there's a lot of tension throughout it. So it should hold for a couple strikes. I mean, I know you want it to hold the entire time you're hunting, but it's something you have to upkeep as you go. All right, so we had two great attempts at spear making. That was awesome. Um, I liked Jaren's spear. It was, uh, what I liked about his was it was a nice, long, fairly straight stick. The diameter of it was good. I liked Mark's spear. What I liked about his was that machine gun handle on there was kind of a unique. I'd never seen that before. That was pretty good. Um, what I liked the most about Mark's was how sturdy it was. See how it his was sturdy. You saw as I stuck it into that stump, it didn't swivel, it didn't bend, which is the main functionality of your spear. You don't want that blade to bend or swivel or anything. Unfortunately, Jaren's wasn't in far enough, and so it didn't um, seat well. So when he lashed it in there, it was nice and tight, but it still gave too much length, much too much room to swivel. So when he stuck it, when I stuck it in that stump, you saw it swivel there. They both came apart, but uh, realistically, when you're shoving it into a piece, uh, piece of meat, it's not going to do that. It's not going to come off readily oh, like, as, that, as it did when I stubbed it, so, stuck it in the stump there. But so I'm going to have to say, uh, Mark Spear actually won on that one because it was sturdier, it was uh, stronger, and it was ready to go. So it didn't fall out uh, as easily as the other one did. So sorry, Jaren. Yeah. There's other. <laughs> There's other stages. Two, There's more, other. So. Two more stages. So the next stage we're going to do is a deadfall trap. We're going to do a figure four deadfall trap. Okay, let's do it. Awesome. So what I want for this, we're going to get some sticks. We're going to have three specific sticks for this figure four deadfall trap. And I'll show you the functionality of each one of those. The width of those that we want to get is going to be between the width of your index finger and your pinky finger, right around there. So. For a figure four trap, these three sticks each have a specific function. You're going to have a bait stick, you're going to have your base stick, and then you'll have the lever stick. See that? It's a four. So what I'm going to start with is my base stick. In the top, I just wanted a wedge. Very simple. The lever stick is the top part. So what you'll see is on this here, this is gonna be sitting on the ground. This lever will be right here and the weight of your rock is right there, okay? So what I want, so I'm just gonna put this at a simple angle, about a 45 degree angle so that it'll go right up against that rock really well. So now I'm gonna make a notch for this to sit right on top of that base stick. The end of this is gonna be a wedge just like my base stick is, just like that. The bait stick is that bottom piece. This is gonna be your trigger, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to make this down to a point so you can slip your bait right onto it. But you just think of oily, salty, fatty foods. Pretty much my diet. <laughs> so what I'm gonna wanna do is put a notch in this stick. Again, because it's green, I don't wanna go too far into the heartwood. Here's my base stick. I've got the notch on there. And I've got this. I want my next cut on my trigger stick right here. This is where the base stick is gonna be coming down. So I'm gonna do it right on the side of this. I'm gonna make a notch. And this notch is perpendicular to the, the notch that I made previously. See that notch there and then this notch on the side. See how that's gonna work? It's gonna pull right against there. 
and that's where my trigger is going to be, but I need to seat it properly on the base stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this square so it has a corner to bite onto. And there you go. That's my figure four trap. And then you work on it. There it is. All right, we're here with the deadfall traps. We prepped them, they're all ready to go. We've got 20 minutes to complete this task. Mark and I are gonna go at the same time and Brandon's gonna do some filming. So, ready to go? Let's do it. Okay. okay. Three, two, one, go. So stage two just started going at it, just laid it out in my head the way it needed to go and just started cutting those wedges and those notches. All right, starting out, I took each of my four sticks, laid it out, made my figure four so that I knew where I needed to cut notches and my wedges. We had the instructions right away, but if you were trying to recall uh, from a book that you read or a video that you watched how to do that from a year or multiple years ago when you're in a situation like that, um, that being as precise as you can would be very helpful. So that's what I did. I tried to be as precise as I could, make a visual before I made the cut, that old uh, measure twice, cut once kind of idea. Setting up the rock was kind of difficult. It was kind of heavy. I thought it was gonna be a little too heavy for the size of sticks that we were using. Uh, they were maybe a quarter of an inch round and that was a pretty heavy rock. But to compensate for that, I went back and I cut the notches and wedges a little bit steeper to make it a little more aggressive so that it would bite just that much better to hold that rock up. Uh, there was a couple of notches that I had to reshape to make it fit. It didn't, uh, when I set it up right away, I saw that the angle was wrong. Um, so again, I think that comes from inexperience. Um, and I think anybody going at it the first time will probably have that same experience where you have to reshape a few things to make it work correctly. If you cut the lever stick at the right angle at the top, it grabs the rock a little bit better. Uh, giving it a little friction to hold on to. Um, when I finally got it up there, I was kind of shaking because like, oh my gosh, is this going to stay? And then it stayed and I was super proud of it. So uh, when I got my rock to stay on and I looked over and saw Mark still, still putting his together, it was a nice little sense of accomplishment since my spear didn't quite hold up to know that my rock held up. So I started uh, maybe gloating a little bit and started putting some sticks on there to complete my trap altogether. So um, it was pr pretty nice to beat Mark at this one. Um, the rock kept slipping on me. So when it finally did hold, I was, I was very pleased with that. Um, I knew Jaron had be already beat me because time had already ended and he'd gotten to the point where he was able to uh, grab some extra sticks to make a little funnel. So I was excited when the rock finally stood up and held. <laughs> okay, these guys worked hard on these traps. They had 20 minutes to go and they used every second of that. In fact, Mark went just a little bit beyond 20 minutes, but he had he had to get it set. Okay, these guys both did a really good job. Uh, Jaron is the clear winner because he got it in the time frame. Unfortunately, Mark didn't make it in the time. They both got it set up, which was great, but uh, you know, we got the clear winner, Jaron won, and that means that we are on to round three. All right, this is stage three. We're gonna do a simple spring snare. Okay, normally we, when you've got wire, you can actually just set up a loop in a trail and it will cinch down and you can have that work really well. But where we were using paracord, we're gonna want some more tension on that. So that sapling that we're gonna put on there is gonna put more tension on it and work where it'll be more effective for us. So let's do it. All right, so for this, we needed a, a little sapling. We've got the sapling here that's gonna put the the spring that's gonna be pulling up on this trigger. Here you've got the trigger stick. You see where I've notched it there. It comes up, I put a groove around here so that my string has something to bite into. My paracord, it won't slip off of that trigger. That's key because when you make the loop out of this, you're gonna to want to make sure that it's gonna be sturdy and sticking to that so that whatever you catch isn't gonna get away. This comes down. Look at this, this is my trigger stick. It's just got a notch on it that's the opposite of this notch. And when this comes in, it's gonna hook right on there and be there. And I've made it pretty deep so that it's not very sensitive, but it illustrates what I'm trying to do here. And you put your bait right inside, and when it comes in, it'll put its head in, 
and it'll eat and it'll kind of fall around it. And as it moves away, or its foot will get on there, and as it moves away, that's what'll catch it. And then you'll have your, your game. Then you can come and check it, and it'll be hanging there for you. Okay, to make stage three super epic for you, we've, uh, we've made it snow, basically, in uh, June in Utah. So it's freezing cold, we're gonna do this fast. Um, GoPro's on. And we got 15 minutes. All right, three, two, one, go. I started with cutting the notch to put the rope around and then the other end I uh, sharpened for the stake. I cut it in half and then I began to shape my no uh, notches. It's the same on both sides, it's just reverse. So it's like fingers uh, connecting or hands holding. Um, my hands got numb. The knife worked pretty well. Um, it was a little slippery but not too bad. Uh, again, I think the cold more than anything was an issue. I started by cutting the, the loop around so that I could tie the paracord on. Then I cut the stick in half, started notching it, and realized I'd notched it backwards. That I needed to start on the other side and create the notch so that it would actually latch on. And um, as I was doing that, I kind of just messed the stick up even more. So I switched the, uh, the sticks, made the one stick, instead of the tree trigger, turn into the ground and the other one vice versa. I was able to stake it in trying to get the string parallel to the stake so that it would hold but it kept pulling it out. Um, the tree was strong, the stake was too short and the ground was wet. Um, trying to get that to stay in the ground was difficult. Uh, it was soft, it was wet. So I went over and I uh, improvised and I found a rock some might say it's cheating. I just think it's clever use of my surroundings. Um, and I actually used that rock to pin down the, the peg in the ground so that the tree wouldn't pull it right up because we were having a problem with that. And um, Mark wasn't a very big fan of that, so he kicked it. <laughs> All right, so uh, it is very cold, but I think these are realistic survival conditions. When you have nothing and you are in those kind of dire circumstances, this is probably what it's going to be like crap. Um, it's not going to be sunny. You're not going to have the best perfect uh, knife for the job or perfect materials. You're going to have to make do. All right, we're going to call this. Uh, time ended a little while ago, actually. We couldn't get him in. Uh, because of the rain, it actually made the ground really soft and our sticks weren't sticking in. And every time we they were hooking them on and just pull them right out of the ground. So they worked really hard, they both did it. There are a lot of things that kind of went wrong, conspired against us from actually getting this done, but we're gonna call it, I'm just gonna say they both won because really they both would have gotten it if the conditions had been a little bit better based on the time constraint that we had. So good job guys. Thanks, thank you yep. so much. Thank you. Hands buddy. <laughs> Can't hardly feel them. That's good. All right. So as you saw, neither one of us won. It was a draw, but it was 37 degrees out there, and we did run out of time on that last stage. Yeah, and having the loss the last two competitions, I prefer a tie. However, you can still be a winner by entering to win one of these three neck knives. That's right. Be a subscriber and comment in the next 24 hours, and we'll pick three of those comments to win. Also, you have to be at least 18 years or older and have a U.S. shipping address. Well, thanks for watching, and make sure you shop Blade HQ, and stay tuned for more great videos. We'll see you next week. For the most part, I feel pretty confident about the whole thing, except for the knots. We'll see how I do on the knot tying. Other than that, I think it's going to be pretty fun. Why do the knots worry you? I'm not the best knot tier on the face of the planet. How many knots do you know how to tie? I know a clove hitch and a square knot. And just that knot to tie your shoes. <laughs> <laughs>